Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a Shanky diagram or alluvial diagram in Origin Pro. So I just opened the Origin Pro right now. Just choose, choose the default uh, workbook and then when you click, the new window will open. So to save time, I'm just going to paste the data that I use for this graph in this column. Now just remove the top first column. Uh, I'm just going to extend it. So select this column, Control X cut and Control V paste over here. Right click and delete this row. Now you have this data which shows a source values and a target value. So that means something is coming from source and going to target. You can also uh, consider this as an example like there are some clients and they are going to a target which means uh, are going to a shop or a business. So it shows that one target goes to how many different businesses. Okay. So and the value will show. Let's say the value shows how much money they spend over there. So I'm just going to make a smaller value so that it can be easy to interpret and easy to understand. So for example, sources are, are our customers and targets are our business ventures, which includes uh, different uh, business places or different shops. You can also say that and value. Let's suppose they are these are the values, how many money they are spending. So now we are going to create a relationship between the source and target based on the values. So now you can see this data over here. I'm going to select it from here. I'm going to go to plot, go to category, and then I'm going to click on the Shanky diagram. So first let's make a Shanky, then I will explain the other one. Now you can see the relationship for each category or each client to the targets they go. For example, first client goes to different businesses or different targets. So now you can see, and you can also compare for the other ones. Now I'm just going to go to back to the first uh, the table. And now you can see that these are the values and the th source values goes to how many targets it is divided into different categories now. Now let's go and see what we can do with this graph. Now as you can see I changed the value to 1000. Now the layer is changed the intensity is changed. Now if I decrease it to 20 again let's go back to the graph again and see what happens. The length is reduced. So Shanky actually shows and gives the bar the weight with which the values are inputted. Now let's see another diagram which is the alluvial diagram. So alluvial diagram shows the relationship from source to target and the value for that one. Now these ones are a different way to show a Shanky diagram. A Shanky diagram actually shows the value in forms of a weight of a bar which means it increases the thickness or decreases the thickness of the bar to show what is the actual value. But in the alluvial diagram they show both source, target and the values. Now let's just go to Shanky diagram and see how, how we can edit this diagram. Now double click over here and then you will have a, this window pop up open. Now there are different options. They are node, they are line and they are labels. When you click on nodes and you click on this one, what happens is that nothing changes. Now if you say none, then all the nodes disappear. That means the main heading which are in the block. Now if you click here again, then there are no nodes here. Now let's click apply again and all the nodes are back. The nodes are actually the starting block which is you can also say the source. Now see what happens if we change the color for the nodes. Now if we change the fill color from here or change by single points or by points we can have different options for colors. You can also change colors from these predefined palettes and when you cl click on apply it will automatically change. Now if you what if you decrease the transparency it will become a bit more lighter. As you see this is a node bar so only the nodes will change. So if you want to change the links, you can go to the second tab, which I will show you in a, in a moment. Now, if you want to increase the thickness of the nodes, which means how thick you want. For example, I increase, you can see the width of the blocks are increased. Now, if I change the thickness again, you can see the thickness will increase more. But I prefer to keep it around 2.5 or 3, which is an ideal size for the nodes. Now you can also increase the gap between the nodes, two adjacent nodes. Now, if I increase the gap, it will tend to decrease the total length of the nodes. So actually Shanky is showing a relationship from the source to the target in terms of the value. So if you decrease the thickness, it will become more smaller. Now let's go to the another part in which I'm going to reduce and um, take it back to the original picture. And then I'm going to make some difference and see what happens. Now let's increase the gap between the node and the link. The link are the b lines and the nodes are the red, red block. So now if you increase, you can see there's a white dash. That means there's a space between them. Now if you increase more, it will go more and have a more distance between them. Now let's just take it back because I want to show a relationship going from one node to the other part. Now I tried changing this part. There wasn't any difference. 
Uh, I think there will be a difference if I have more data, but I am using a small data set to show you a good example. That's why uh, I didn't work on this one. If I have any information about this, I will sure let you know. Now I tried changing, uh, seeing the difference what happens, but nothing was changing. So I guess might be because of the lesser nodes and might be because of the lesser target values. So now let's go to the labels. Now you see these are different coloring options. Now if you click on this one, that means it will keep the same color as a node. So red node has a red line, blue node has a blue lines, golden node, node has a golden lines and so on. Now if you change the color for each target value, that means the end points which are the target. So it will choose the color for those lines. It will choose the colors from there. Now if you choose a specific color gradient or specific color uh, pattern, you can see it will have a different variation and then you can choose different sections and it will change it accordingly. Now go to points, change the color and change this uh, value and you will have different variations in the colors. Similarly, you can try different colors and see how it uh, works. Now if you decrease the transparency, that means it will make it more darker and more brighter. That means the actual color. But if you make it less transparent, that means it will give a shade. That's also good and also looks better. It depends upon the design. Now this is the curvature. So if you see, these are the straight lines right now, go straight. But if you give a curvature, they will curve a little bit and instead they will give a good shape for that. But make sure you make a curvature depending upon your data. If you have less data, you can keep less curvature, which will show uh, somehow they are moving to from one point to another. That's one way to show that. Now, these are the labels. Labels actually show the values. So if you click on there here, you can see these values are changing, which is the node values and the target values. You can also change the size for the node and target values and you can easily see what happens with that. Now if you increase the color, if you change the color to white, you will see what happens. So it will change to white. It's not too prominent so I'm just going to make it, uh, bring it back to black and see how it looks. And the black is more prominent in this case. So it all depends upon the color. So if you have darker colors, you must use black. If you have lighter colors, you can use different other variation depending upon your own choice. Now I'm choosing the total value, which means the total value of the last third column in the book sheet, which I showed you before. Now this is a Shanky diagram. If you want to change the color, if you want to see the individual node, just click on the node and you will see the relationship with the other uh, target values. Now if you click on the 4 edge, that means it has a connection with uh, most of most of the target values. So here you can see a different categorical data and how you can work on it. Now I just right click it and copy the data and I will paste in the PowerPoint later. Now let's work on the alluvial diagram. So same process, you click on this and it, the dialog box opens and now when you go to the nodes, links and labels, same options. So these are the border color, you can also change from here. So if you see there's a blue border on the nodes, but if I don't want to change from here, uh, I feel more comfortable changing from the nodes itself. Now if you have add a border color here, I don't want, I will remove that. So and if I want to fill for the my nodes, I will change different colors and choose like this. Now you can see that all the nodes have same color that means source have same target have different and then so on and it goes like this. Now all the colors are same because uh, these are just being chosen because these are source values and just to differentiate between a source and a target values. Now you can change the values and the transparency of each nodes and also you can decrease or increase the gap. Now in this case when you decrease or increase the gap the distance between them will decrease but the total length of the nodes will not decrease it will keep the same because this is not portraying the value, this is not portraying the uh, amount of value in form of bars but just portraying the connection between the source and target values. So now if I increase or decrease the uh, length you can see the same way which I did in the Shanky diagram. Now if you change the color, it will show a different perspective which means uh, the node color will go to node and the target color will have the same target va color values. Now if you change this value, now if you go for another one, let me make it a bit smaller. Now see I changed that I want it from go to from target from value to target and target to source. Now you, have, you can see that they are using source color. Now what if I want to choose a gradient color so that means the target source value comes from red then goes to blue and then changes accordingly. So there are different variations for colors whichever colors you want you can use it depending upon your old overall theme of your process or overall theme of the design that you are making. So if you are making colorful design you can use colorful gradients if you are different design you can use one single gradient. So these these are just an options in which you can change and see how the color looks. Also you can change individually the color also. You just click on one line and on the right hand side there will be a small cursor you can change the color individually. 
Now this is looks too colorful. I also don't recommend a too colorful diagram because sometimes when it get, becomes too colorful, it's also not too readable. So I prefer choosing appropriate colors, not too many, but uh, of course I would like to have some gradient and have an interactive look, which uh, it looks overall good with the whole whole theme of your uh, article or design, whatever you are making. So. This is how you make a Shanky or a Lubial diagram in Origin Pro. This is one example. There are different other examples in which you can also use uh, circular chords uh, to show the connection between one point to another. So there are a number of ways to show your uh, data connection in between them and their relationship between them. So if you have anything that you want to show or the different things that you want to show or present your data, you can use these diagrams. They're really helpful and uh, they also have an attractive look. Now let's go back to the slides and paste and you can see a comparison between the Shanky diagram and the Lubial diagram. I hope you guys like this video and uh, I hope that you uh, the my speed in this video was appropriate and you can understand me really properly. This time I did increase the speed of the video. I tried to keep it short and try to do a little bit fast in my own uh, recording so that you can easily understand. I hope you guys like my video. If you haven't watched my previous video on animation, uh, please do watch them. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in your comments down below and I will get back to you. Till then, take care. Allah Hafiz.